On its release, Columbia PR Flax bragged that the casino in Johnny O'Clock was the most expensive set built in Hollywood since the end of World War II, during which the government decreed that no set could cost more than $5,000. That's where producer Edward G. Neelis comes in. This is the only film credit in Neelis's checkered career, and he was especially well-suited to the material. Neelis began his professional life as a bookie in Los Angeles, and during the 1930s, he became a member of what was known as the Combination, a notorious affiliation of cops, crooks, and civic power brokers that essentially controlled Los Angeles. Neelis ran gambling houses and was a co-owner of the city's legendary Clover Club, 8477 Sunset Boulevard, where Hollywood and organized crime regularly rubbed shoulders. He was good pals with George Raft and Ben Bugsy Siegel. When the combination broke up in the late 30s, Neelis moved to Las Vegas, getting in on the ground floor of a legal gambling empire. After forming JEM Productions, Neelis rented his gambling equipment to Columbia to authentically recreate the kind of illegal gambling house that got him run out of Los Angeles. He must have been laughing all the way to the bank. Neelis's silent partner in JEM Productions was celebrated Hollywood attorney Jerry Giesler. One of the great players on the notorious side of Hollywood history, Giesler provided legal defense in high-profile cases for clients such as Busby Berkeley, Robert Mitchum, Lana Turner, and Bugsy Siegel. The involvement of Neelis and Giesler in Johnny O'Clock proves once again how entwined Hollywood was with organized crime, both on a local and national level. Ellen Drew, who played the beautiful but battered Nell Marchetti, was discovered working in an ice cream parlor by William Demarest, who got her a screen test in the early 30s. She appeared under her real name, Terry Ray, for almost 10 years before changing it, first to Aaron, then Ellen Drew. She worked at several studios during the 40s, her face a favorite of cinematographers who always treated her well. Burnett Guffey's close-ups in this film being a gorgeous example. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if William Friedkin saw Johnny O'Clock at some point in his impressionable youth. It's remarkable how similar Lee J. Cobb's Inspector Koch is to Inspector Kinderman in Friedkin's The Exorcist. It may as well be the same character with 28 years of police work under his belt. In a rare, understated performance, Cobb is one of the essential anchors holding together the convoluted Johnny O'Clock script. New Yorker Robert Rawson had been exclusively a screenwriter before taking over the direction of Johnny O'Clock. His impressive credits included Dust Be My Destiny, The Sea Wolf, and The Strange Love of Martha Ivers. He'd follow this picture with Body and Soul, one of the best boxing movies ever, and in 1949, his adaptation of All the King's Men, which he wrote, produced, and directed, would win the Best Picture Oscar. But Rawson was also a member of the Communist Party of America from 1937 to 47, and his steep rise to the top in Hollywood did not spare him from being blacklisted. Only after naming names to HUAC in 1953 was he granted more Hollywood work, which peaked with The Hustler in 1961, another film Rawson wrote, produced, and directed. He died in 1966 at only 57 years of age. Next week, we'll welcome an unexpected visitor to Noir Alley, Ginger Rogers. She plays against type as a gangster's mall in the suspenseful Tight Spot, co-starring Edward G. Robinson and Brian Keith, directed by the always reliable Phil Carlson. Until then, check in with us on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed, and try not to gamble away your paycheck. I'm looking at you, Ben Mankiewicz. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. See you next weekend.